The best athletes in the world are competing right now in Paris for the 2024 Olympics, and that includes about two dozen or so athletes with a connection to Oregon and Southwest Washington from track and field to gymnastics to soccer to fencing and so much more. The Northwest, it is great to see, is well represented. Thanks so much for watching. I'm David Molko. We're highlighting the 10 local stars to keep your eye on as they chase Olympic gold. We'll kick things off with Oregon State gymnast Jade Carey. She is the Beavers most decorated gymnast and a reigning Olympic champ. Orlando Sanchez has her story. It's hard to believe. That sounds crazy to me. Even for a reigning gold medalist. Um, I definitely had my doubts. To hear her name called. It was something that I'll never forget. Jade Carey is a two-time Olympian. Yeah, I never thought that I would even get there once, so getting here again is the most special feeling in the world. Like, all the hard work and all the bad days have really paid off. It's been quite the journey. Her coach and father, Brian, has been by her side every step of the way. We've been through everything together, um, especially in gymnastics and just me as a kid, and he's never once doubted me in my whole life and has always helped me prepare to get where I am today. Carrie has taken Oregon State Gymnastics to another level, rewriting the record books. Work ethic is incredible. I think that's just goes without saying, just the behind the scenes hours and hours and hours. Tokyo was all about perseverance, turning one of her worst days into one of her best days, bouncing back to win Olympic gold on floor. He's a proud papa. It's just been an incredible ride and, and a journey and I'm just happy I could be a part of it. I'm so proud of her and yeah. <laughs> so what's the secret to success? We just made a rule when I started coaching her that we don't talk about gymnastics at home ever. As she got a little older if we needed to talk about gymnastics and we'd have to schedule a meeting at the gym early. <laughs> have you take a deep breath in? A global pandemic, empty arenas, so much has changed since 2021. Paris will be different. It means a lot to me, um, especially that I'm going to have more of a normal experience. In Tokyo, Kerry was competing as an individual. This time, there's even more at stake. I'm really excited to just be a part of the five person team this time. Um, we have big goals to bring a medal back to the United States, a gold medal back to the United States. So just being able to put my best foot forward and contribute to that means a lot. Better believe it, Jade Carey is a two time Olympian. The only question left, how many medals are coming home to Corvallis? Orlando Sanchez, KGW Sports in Oregon. I'm from Oregon. I, I rep Oregon, and this is this is who I am. It's where Jada Ross's story begins. Born and raised from Oregon. From Medford to Eugene, state champion to national champion, Ross is a shot put boss, a winner at every level. I think I knew from a young age that you know what it takes to be one of the best is to love something, and I love this sport. Shining at Hayward Field on her own turf, the collegiate record holder, earning bronze at the U.S. Olympic track and field trials. With a toss of 64 feet, three and a quarter inches, just like that, Jada Ross is an Olympian. That means the world to me. I mean, um, just saying I'm an Olympian is just like mind blowing to me. I mean, it's everything I've ever wanted. This was years in the making. When I was super young, one of my ways of manifesting and, and, and visualizing, um, when I started to learn how to write my signature when I was younger, I would write USA under it. Because all I wanted to be was an Olympian. Mission accomplished. I get to represent USA and, and on a big stage. And um, you know, this really is a life dream um, that I've achieved today. And to do it here is just such a beautiful way to do it. A full circle moment at 22 years old, turning dreams to reality. Today I can, you know, write in my journal and do my signature at the end and write USA with a period. Now, she'll write the next chapter of her story in Paris. Orlando Sanchez, KGW Sports. If there was anyone built for the Olympic stage, it's Sabrina Ionescu. The former Oregon Duck is ready to represent Team USA in Paris. 
have just been a part of it and have understood what it means to represent your country at all levels. Um, now being able to have the opportunity to to be at the highest the highest you know honor and achievement that you could ever have as an athlete is to win a gold medal for your country. UNESCO has already won four gold medals, most recently at the 2022 FIBA Women's World Cup, but this will be different. I've never played in an Olympics, and so being able to play, um, you know, for for the big prize and just wanting to, to do that and knowing it's just paid off all the years of being able to be a part of USA basketball from a young age, dedicating summers and, um, you know, sacrificing a lot. The team has been dominant, winning every Olympic gold medal since 1996, but the rest of the world is catching up. China's a, a powerhouse. Belgium, we just played and they were so good. Australia is really good because they play a lot of these young kids grow up in, in these organizations and are able to compete for their national team because there's investment in youth a lot, a lot sooner now. With a team filled with superstars, UNESCO is certainly one of the standouts. After becoming the number one pick in the WNBA draft, she got her own Nike shoe. It immediately became a bestseller, and the Sabrina too just dropped last month. While she's finding success on and off the court, she appreciates everyone who's had her back along the way knowing that they've all supported me throughout my college career, my professional career, and now being able to play at, at the highest stage and compete for an Olympic gold medal, I would just be so thankful for everyone that supported me throughout my entire journey. Art Edwards, KGW Sports. I'm so excited. Like, I wanted this so bad. The hard work paid off, and Woody Kincaid is now a two-time Olympian. I mean, yeah, you gotta, you gotta believe. Kincaid finished second in the 10,000 at Olympic trials in Eugene after coming back from an injury. Nervous. <laughs> yeah, I mean, no one likes to come to Olympic trials having not raced in three months. Um, that was not ideal. A race that saw him battle it out with his former Bowerman teammate, Grant Fisher. Just like today, that race today is going to be very similar to a championship race in Paris. So I think that was a great uh, experience. Like, don't get caught up in any of the weird stuff that anyone's doing and just kind of, you know, know who's going to be there in the end and, and trust your gut. The former Portland pilot felt the support being a local athlete. They're Oregon too, you know? So pilot, pilots are always in the shadow of Oregon, but like it feels really good to, to represent UP still now. Kincaid ran in both the 10,000 and 5,000 in Tokyo, but will just run the 10K in Paris. With his coach, Mike Smith, he's focused on running his race. The opportunity to win is there, of course you're going to win it, yeah. But if you go out there thinking like, oh, I'm going to go win it, then it's just, that's not how you, it's not a good way to look at it. So I think Mike does a really good job of like, hey, just keep yourself in the race. And if it's there, it's there. And with his injury behind him, he's ready to represent Team USA. Now it's looking pretty good, you know I mean? Now I can come around and, and uh, really sharpen up for Paris. Orlando Sanchez, KGW Sports. I have dreamed of competing in an Olympics. Uh, there's nothing like it. Portland Thorns forward Sophia Smith will find that out firsthand for the first time. We love all eyes on us, so I think, yeah, what better time to kind of show the world what we can do. Smith won't be the only Portland Thorn on the U.S. Olympic team. Midfielder Sam Coffey will join her in Paris. She was waiting for the call. It was short and sweet. It was a great little chat. I honestly. I was so excited and over the moon, I feel like I blacked out, like I don't even remember a lot of it. For coffee, being called an Olympian is surreal. I think I'm just so overcome with emotion and excitement and joy that I get to, to call myself that and it's not something I, I take lightly. The midfielder didn't get selected for the team that went to Tokyo. She says her teammates here in Portland helped her through that difficult time. Everyone's got a story and everyone has um, defining moments in their career that lead them to the success that they find and I think that it is those moments and how we respond to them that really define us as people and players. Smith and Coffee are part of a team looking for redemption. They had a disappointing result at the World Cup last summer. The team failed a medal at the 2016 games and won bronze at the Tokyo games. Smith and Coffee are first time Olympians that plan to learn from the past. We're taking hard lessons and, and hard experiences and turning them into um, resilience, turning them into strength, turning them into growth. And I think that's ultimately like what makes champions and championship teams. For both players, making it to the Olympics is a dream come true, a dream they hope will result in gold. Art Edwards, KGW Sports. 
It's a feeling like no other. The crowd was cheering. I was like, man, this, this is what I do the sport for. But it ain't uh, easy to so, achieve. The tape measure doesn't lie. The, the ball is still 16 pounds. So it's so unforgiving uh, that you can't cut corners. You and rarely does it go according to plan. Kind of three injuries back to back to back. And so it felt like I was one step forward and two steps back. A torn pectoral muscle, a nagging elbow injury. It's been a challenging year for Ryan Krauser. Yeah, I mean, it's it can be extremely frustrating. You have the, the back of your mind just saying like, man, I just can't catch a break. Like, but that's shot real. put. Uh, hard work pays off. It just doesn't necessarily pay off right when you want it to. And Even for the greatest to ever do it. At the end of the day, it's throwing a, a heavy ball as far as I can. The sport doesn't owe me anything. <laughs> Standing 6'7", the 31-year-old from Boring, Oregon, battled through the setbacks to make his first throws in months at Olympic trials. Awesome atmosphere there in Eugene. Felt, felt like a, a hometown crowd out there. They were so supportive, which was awesome. Reminding everyone, including himself, that he still got it. And as soon as I walked out and kind of got in the ring, it, it just felt like riding a bike. It was, it was like, I've done this so many times. Krauser is the king of the sport in a field of elite competition. I think when people look back on this time, they'll say it was the golden age of, of shot put. The Sam Barlow high grad is the world record holder, a two-time world champion, and a two-time Olympic gold medalist with a shot at history. It would be a dream come true. I mean, as any, any track and field athlete, you, you grow up and you dream about winning the Olympics, let alone uh, three times. Uh, but, but in my sport, no one has ever won three consecutive golds or three golds at all. So um, it would be a testament, I think, to the longevity of my career. Now at this point, what, what is left to accomplish? What still motivates me is kind of the same as when I was younger. It's uh, that, that quest to be better. Um, you're, there's no better feeling than throwing a PR. It's what keeps him coming back. The, the titles and accolades are, are fantastic, uh, but it's tough to be kind of motivated by them just because at some point that'll end. Um, but that, that feeling of I'm, being, I'm better today than I was yesterday is, is really what motivates me. Um, chasing that feeling. One throw at a time. Orlando Sanchez, KGW Sports. This is Megda. Skarbonkevich. It's something people always struggle with. Megda Skarbonkevich is a force to be reckoned with on the fencing strip. A master at her discipline of saber, she's among the best in the world. My dad always tells me who wants it more, who wants to win. And so mentally I set myself up like, okay, it's like, just balance it out, like, don't overthink it. Megda trains in Beaverton with her dad, Adam. In 1996, he qualified for the Olympics, but didn't compete because he wasn't able to convert his citizenship in time. Now, at just 18 years old, Magda will make her Olympic debut. I like that with Sabre, I can sort of be myself on this trip, even like, you know, it's a sport and it's like you're conditioned to do different movements and actions, but it's also like physical chess, they call it. She began fencing at the age of six and in her first competition, she finished fourth to last. She kept practicing, kept competing, and at the age of 16, she took gold in the saber at the Junior World Championships in 2022. It's a feat she accomplished again the very next year. And that was just amazing. In the fall of 2023, she won gold at the Pan American Games. On the strip, she's focused, fierce, and really, really good. But if you take Magda away from the sports, she's a different person. I'm very like easygoing, like loud, funny. And just also, I love art. I love doing art of any sorts. It's another passion of mine. Besides training with her dad, she once trained alongside the best with Mariel Zagunas, a two-time Olympic gold medalist. You watch her train, it's just like, like no one else trains. That work ethic is what drove Magda to be a champion herself and one of 10 to watch at the Paris Olympics. I've played that race a thousand times in my head and for it to finally happen like that was incredible. That race clinched a spot on Team USA for Cole Hawker. So many of these guys are so deserving of that team that making it top three is just so cutthroat, but I just 
so happy that I was the first one across the line. The former Oregon Duck dominated in the 1500. I was like, I'm here, I'm healthy. I've PR'd in every, every event in the past, like 365 days. So I just knew I couldn't set myself up better just executing on the day. Earning a spot in the Olympics for the second time in a row, this time with more experience. I think 21, I was, I was just happy to be there. I'm very happy to be there again, but uh, I think the bar is raised and uh, I was like very happy with sixth place in the Olympics. And, but now I think it's the, the medal is the big goal, so that's how it's changed. Hawker is relishing the pressure that comes with being one of the best runners in the world. It was just completely different mental side of it this year. and I'm, just honestly really proud of myself on the, the way I handled that because um, it's, it's just really hard. The 1500 is stacked with talent with the likes of Jakob Ingebrigtsen of Norway, Josh Kerr of Great Britain, and Timothy Chariot of Kenya. But Hawker is ready to leave his mark. The goal is definitely a medal, but I'm not going to limit myself to top three. I'm going to go for gold for sure. Art Edwards, KGW Sports. Jordan Childs, Vancouver, Washington. There's no place like home. Growing up there was actually pretty cool, knowing that, you know, that's where everything started for me, especially within gymnastics. Jordan Childs is a superstar with superpowers. My favorite thing about being a gymnast is knowing that I feel like a superhero. I love superheroes, and every apparatus or event that we do, I feel like I'm flying, especially on bars. I feel like I'm Spider-Man. Gymnastics has also been a form of expression for the Prairie High School graduate really being able to embrace who you are within that side, whether it's dancing, whether you know it's your techniques or something that is just very powerful. Game recognize game. From Beyonce to Megan the Stallion to Michael Jordan, all sending words of encouragement as she goes for gold in Paris. Team USA wants every gold in this world because you know it's a really cool piece. It's a really cool statement to who you are and it's always going to be in history books. Her first Olympic Games didn't go as planned in Tokyo. Childs stepped up for teammate Simone Biles, who withdrew from competition due to the twisties. Team USA came home with a silver medal. Childs was even given Vancouver's key to the city. I was really, really proud of, and I'm always going to be proud of it. I look at that medal each and every day, knowing that there was were the times where I was crying at practice or I was just, you know, frustrated or didn't want to do the sport anymore or I wanted to quit. Most of the team is running it back in Paris. Childs saying they're here for redemption, but it's about more than medals. My masterpiece would be being the 100% Jordan, being able to walk in with my friends with a different mindset and knowing that no matter what we put on the floor, we'll be proud of ourselves. There's no doubt that girl from Vancouver will shine on sport's biggest stage. Orlando Sanchez, KGW Sports. Once Peter Quinton made up his mind, he went all in on rowing. He's part of the men's eights boat headed to Paris for the Olympics. And this is something that most people only dream about. So to have achieved this already in my career um, is pretty incredible. The Grant High graduate got his start the summer before the eighth grade. He started rowing with the Rose City Rowing Club and had a lot of success. He rowed at both Harvard University as part of the heavyweight eight squad and then used his last year of eligibility to row at the University of Washington. After college, he joined the national team. Rowing became a big part of his life. I really just took to it. I took to the camaraderie of the boat on, on the team. There's just something about being in a boat together that really bonds you incredibly quickly. The national team, he's the rower closest to the coxswain. Quinton has extra responsibility because he sets the rhythm for the team. Quinton has been with the national team for three years and has been in big events before, but nothing quite like the Olympics. There are no do-overs, there's not next year, it's four years from now if we want to get it right. He's had plenty of support on his athletic journey and will have family cheering him on in Paris. Both my, my parents and my youngest sister will be there and then I have a, a brother who's unfortunately not able to make it, but I'll still have a good family contingent there. Art Edwards, KGW Sports.